Hello. Uh, <laughs> uh, okay, my name's Luke. I'm a journalist for CNBC. This is my very first video brains talk, so please be, please be kind. Uh, <laughs> uh, in case you don't recognise the symbol, that is the logo for the Crystal Maze. <laughs> Has anyone here, uh, well, you all heard of the Crystal Maze, surely? Yeah. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, full disclosure, I did support their crowdfunding campaign last year, uh, and I do know one of the creative directors of it, but it's just uh, just general talk about Crystal Maze and about escape games in general. Um, this talk's going to be about... This talk's going to be about the Crystal Maze, uh, which was reopened in London for people to take part in actually have a go at. I'm going to talk about what it is, what it's like, what it's like to go around the Crystal Maze and around escape games in general. Um, and along the way I'm going to try and describe some of the lessons that perhaps video games can learn from the Crystal Maze and escape games. Um, but the first thing I want to ask is, have you ever imagined being locked in a room with nothing but your skills and your brain power to get you out? Do you think it'd be terrifying or, or do you think you'd rise to the challenge and figure a way out? I'm pretty sure I'd be bloody terrified. It'd be awful. Uh, and to be honest, um, we've actually already been in that situation. If any of you played a video game, you've probably been in a locked room at some point. I mean, it's, it's uh, the opening situation in Silent Hill 4. You're locked in a, an apartment um, with no means of escape. Uh, lots of point and click adventure games do it, uh, such as Mystery of the Druids, which is a like mist like adventure. Um, and if you look for Escape the Room on your mobile phone, on a games or your mobile tablet, it will come up on the App Store with dozens and dozens of this kind of, of, this kind of game, uh, of entries. Um, if any, I don't know if anyone's played those games. All the ones I saw looked absolutely terrible, so I wouldn't recommend any of them. Um, but real life escape games are an actual thing. Uh, they're a thing you can actually do, and we become, they're becoming increasingly popular and popping up, popping up more and more often. In fact, walking up the road here, I walked, one, walked past one called Clue Quest, which I'd not even heard of before, but now I know there's one here. Um, there's lots of different names for them, like Escape games, the main one, ETR, Hint Hunt, Puzzle Hunt, Clue Quest, Locked Room Games. There's loads of different ones. Um, has anyone here played an escape game before? Can you put your hand up? It's a little handful, yeah. So um, that's pretty good to know. Um, for those who haven't and don't know what they are, the basic premise is that you, you and your team are locked in a room or a series of rooms with a time limit to solve a set of puzzles in order to get your way out. That makes sense, right? Um, the themes can vary. Uh, there's ones that are designed around sort of Victorian... Fan Victorian horror, uh, murder mysteries, time travel, uh, Harry Potter style music and fantasy. There's a huge variety of themes that these games can be designed around. One of the first escape games to open was in Kyoto in July 2007. The market established itself there uh, and around Asia and then spread since 2012. Um, they've spread all around Europe, around the West. Uh, right now, estimates vary, but there's around 1,500 games around Europe. In the UK alone, there's over 100 different um, escape games that are open to the public. Um, and that's according to Escape Games UK, a website that tracks ETR activity. And that brings me to the point of the talk, the Crystal Maze. The Crystal Maze, if you don't know it, for anyone on the internet who doesn't know it, was a ridiculous TV show from the 90s that's almost constantly uh, being rerun on Challenge TV. Um, and it's now an actual thing that people can go and do, which is amazing. Um, like, does anyone not know at all what the Crystal Maze was? I'll, I'll do it a quick explain of anyway. So, <laughs> again, for the people at home. Um, the, the point was it was a game show for grown adults who'd run around theme zones. The themes were Aztec, industrial, futuristic, and medieval. Uh, there was also an ocean zone um, in the late series. Um, and the aim was to unlock crystals, and those crystals helped you win a prize at the end of the game. Uh, the, whole sh the whole game show was under the watchful eye of Richard O'Brien, who was basically a bald Ziggy Stardust. He was just an incredibly charismatic, crazy actor who led the whole thing. Um, so the Crystal Maze is now reopened as an escape game in London. Um, technically, that's an exaggeration. It's not technically an escape game. What it is, is, a, um, is more accurately described as an immersive theatre experience. Immersive experiences have been popping up more and more around London um, in the recent years. Probably the biggest... Examples of those would be Secret Cinema or Punch Drunk Theatre. Um, to be concise, an immersive experience is one that actively and directly involves the audience in the performance. And in some cases, the audience are act, uh, have a decisive impact on how the performance concludes. Um, before any professional drama experts tell me that that's wrong and that's an oversimplification, I know uh, I'm not at university more, I'm not a drama student, and I don't care. 
But the Crystal Maze shares a lot of the same, ex same elements of escape games. Uh, it's still collaborative. It's all team-based. You go around with a group of friends. Um, you have to solve puzzles. It, uh, and although some of the puzzles in this case are much more physical, uh, actually involve climbing around ropes or going up ladders, that kind of thing, whereas normal escape games are much more mental and logic puzzles, riddles, that kind of thing. Um, in a normal ETR game, you're locked in one room or maybe a couple of rooms for about an hour. In the Crystal Zone, you have an hour to explore dozens of rooms and you get locked in each room for a couple of minutes to try and unlock the crystal. So really it's more like a series of escape room games tied together. I should actually try and remember that I've got a slideshow. So, I mean, that's the Aztec zone of the new crystal maze, as you can see. That's one of the puzzles inside. That's part of the industrial zone. <laughs> um, so the appeal of the crystal maze, um, I think it is obvious. Um, for many of us in this room who grew up in the 90s, we grew up watching it on TV and imagining having a go in that maze because it looked amazing. Uh, it had naff music and beige jumpsuits and a weird presenter, and that left a very strong impression in everyone's brains. Um, I like to think the success of the current Crystal Maze is the fact it's managed to weaponize nostalgia. <laughs> but, but what about escape games? What's their appeal? Um, part of that answer is asking what the appeal of puzzles is. I think you could spend a whole talk, a whole video game talk, just on why people like doing puzzles and completing puzzles. For me, there's a rush from solving a puzzle. It's very satisfying to prove my intelligence and pass the designer's test. Um, and if you look at the recent success of The Witness, the video game, that shows that there's a huge appeal out there for uh, brain teasers and puzzles. I asked Chris Dixon, the writer of Escape Games UK, the website I mentioned earlier, um, why he thinks puzzles and escape games hold such an appeal. A good puzzle will look impossible at first, but it's designed to be solved. Escape games can be more physical, kinetic or dramatic. Solving impossible looking puzzles in an escape game is like a magic act. Except you're not watching a magician on stage, the game guides you through the, ex through the experience. It performs the trick, and it's the magician itself. I've asked several other game, escape game designers about what they think the secret is to um, escape games' appeal and its success, um, and what sets them apart from other forms of entertainment. Jonathan Yee is the director of Lockdown Singapore, another escape game in Asia. Uh, he said the, game has, the games allow players to think outside of the box and improve their analytical skills and their creativity. Nargiza Muradova is the co-founder of Enigma Quests, She's based here in London, and um, she said something similar. In a well-designed room, players have to think out of the box to find different solutions. So the challenge facing them, it excites the teams, and it has a huge satisfaction and self-achievement once it's... I shouldn't have put this on two different bits of paper. Once it's overcome. Um, if you read through thousands of reviews that players have left at different venues, the vast majority of them note the unusualness of the experience. So, so now we've got a kind of definition of escape rooms. They're unusual, they're unique, and they provide a satisfying challenge. That sounds a lot like video games to me. Um, and I think this is why we, as video game players, are particularly, uh, well, the natural audience for escape games. We're particularly gifted at playing escape games. We're, we're used to going into unfamiliar situations, um, using visual clues, and looking for clues and objects of importance, and using our analytical skills developed through countless hours of gameplay to solve the puzzle with which we're presented. Um, example of that is in the current Crystal Maze, there is a game where four stands in the, there's four platforms to stand on, you're not allowed to stand on the floor, but there's holes in the floor, and over in the corner there's stones, which are the right size of the floor. So using our analytical skills, you work out you need to travel around the floor to move the stones into the place. I asked Nick Moran, who's the designer of Time Run, another escape game based here in London, over in Hackney, um, and he described the similarity between escape games and video games. Escape games are essentially bringing the video game experience to real life, allowing you to be the protagonist in your own adventure. We've all fantasized about being that Indiana Jones, that kind of spy thriller protagonist, and the ETR genre is the opportunity to really be the hero. Most people never get that opportunity and that realistic, and realistically, they wouldn't want to, it, want to do it if it came across, if it happened in real life. An ETR game is a piece of escapism with very defined elements. According to Nick, ETR games, because they are such an interactive experience, they allow people to carve out their own narrative with their friends, which is, why, which is what people are used to doing in an experiential way across all media. So here's another point of similarity between escape games and video games, is play agency. 
In an escape game, you have a great deal of agency. It's up to you to solve the puzzle in order to progress to the next challenge. The Crystal Maze takes that level of agency to, the, to a higher degree. In the Crystal Maze, you get to pick the type of game you play. There's four types of game, physical, skill, mental, and mystery games. So you actually get to choose what kind of experience you want, what you think would be best associate, best uh, suited to yourself or to your friends, or even challenge yourself. If you don't think you're quite good at sort of physical challenges, you can try them. They're all, they're all very accessible. Um, I've lost my place. That's why a script isn't a good idea. <laughs> now, obviously, a lot of video games also have that kind of player agency. And I, but I sometimes feel certain games don't always use that to the full benefit. Or they'd benefit more from building greater player agency. I've been playing a lot of Fallout 4 and I, had the, I have the most fun with that game when I just choose a direction, go off and discover things. Um, coming across new quests or small tableaus of weird situations that, are just, that just the game generates. I pref but a lot of the time I find myself playing Fallout 4 where I'm just following an objective of the mini-map in the corner of the screen. I'm not actually involved in the experience, I'm just following uh, the marker. And there's other games I've played where I do the exact same thing. I'm not really exerting any agency, I'm just following the marker. But I, um, so sometimes that hand-holding might be desirable, like if you just want a more relaxing experience, or the challenge of the gameplay is enough that you don't need to be led through. But other people do want that, that level of agency. In some of the Crystal Maze challenges, you're often giving literally no clue what to do. You go into a room and you have to look around and find the crystal for yourself. You have to work out what to do for yourself, which is a really great experience. Um, and I find that highly satisfying, and it's really ex amazing part of the whole thing. What another key appeal of the escape games and Crystal Mazes is the variety of games that are offered. Nagisa from uh, Escape Enigma Quest, she explains that really well. One reason why players grow to love these games is that many well-designed rooms offer puzzle puzzles for different thinking people. There might be a number of puzzles that are visual teasers or word challenges or action challenges, and there's many more different types. The Crystal Maze, again, has huge amounts of variety. So along with those other types of puzzles I just mentioned, you've got uh, physical challenges that require spatial awareness or dexterity. Um, your ability to communicate with your, with your teammates is also a big part of the challenge. Video games have been great at offering a variety of experiences within one package. Um, Arkham Knight, uh, which I played last year, mixed stealth sections of brawling and car racing and riddler puzzles. Uh, it tests your ability to glide across the city. So there's a huge variety there. Team Fortress 2 did the same thing. It's just, on in the, you could summarise it as a first-person shooter. But within that, it mixes a huge variety of experiences. You've got the heavy, who plays very differently from the spy. Or you've got the medic and the engineer, who basically play a resource management game rather than a shooter. I think the point I'm trying to make is that Offering a variety of experiences in a video game can really add to its appeal and its longevity to the player. What's kind of fascinating, looking back at escape games in general, is that they really follow the same sort of trajectory of video games. After establishing themselves, video game developers began, to, uh, began a race to provide a, more qu a higher quality experience with better graphics or gameplay or new cutscenes. Um, it, it began a features arm race. Uh, you still see that with new console generations, each one incrementally more, slightly more quality than the last. Escape games are also now engaged in that kind of arms race. As time's gone on and become more popular, escape games have to spend more money on creating a higher quality experience in order to create more uh, and more immersion. Uh, Jonathan Yee's the director of, uh, I mentioned him earlier, he's, another, he's the director of another escape game. According to him, escape games first started out as a low-cost business, which is the appeal for entrepreneurs as they run a rundown basement and design a game based on that abandoned basement. The new generation of games require more technology as players demand higher quality and innovative games. I mean, just looking at the Crystal Maze, it has very high production values, um, thanks in part to them raising a lot of money on their Kickstarter. And they've managed to create a really immersive experience thanks to that. Um, but at this point, I think I've got to point out where video games and escape games are very different. For one thing, um, escape games are a physical experience rather than a virtual one. Escape games can be very immersive, but, and that means they can engage more of our senses. You're literally inside a room, it's all around you. Um, it's not just what you can see and hear, but actually feeling holding a crystal, or the smell of the musty books in the medieval zone, or even the temperature that they're able to control. In the medieval zone, it's 
uh, as you'd imagine, it's very cold because it's a medieval castle, whereas the Aztec zone is literally hot in there. It's actually boiling <laughs> because it's meant to be kind of like uh, the tropics. Um, but obviously, escape games can't offer the same sort of narrative experience that we've become used to in video games. Um, Escape games, by their very nature, they're frantic and they're very social and they're very fun. I mean, I've had a great time going around uh, with teammates. Um, <laughs> in, the cor in the corner there is Alice Bell uh, yeah. of Video Game of Fame. <laughs> but that's the thing. It, escape games always offer, an, many of them offer a narrative, but when you're in there, you're with your friends and you're focusing on the game itself, you don't really pay attention to the narrative. Whereas with a video game, you can spend as much time as you want, slowly exploring, getting, to use, getting into the narrative. Um, and that can be really important. So I know, I know a lot of what I've about talked about isn't actually applicable to video games. Obviously, a video game can't change the temperature of the room for me. Um, uh, in a narrative-based game, there's not going to be that sort of social puzzle-solving element. You might not even have puzzles in your game. But the sort of experience you want from each type of game will be radically different. And they require different skill sets if you're going to develop one. The main point, if I have one, is that escape games are very unique. <laughs> they offer a really new experience. They're really fun and exciting, and they find a challenge unlike anything else. I really urge everyone to go and try one. They're fantastic. You might learn something new about yourself or about your friends, but most importantly, most importantly you learn why you love games, all types of games. Thank you. <laughs>